Hey guys, what's going on? It is Andy Elliott. This video is gonna be about three ways to grow a big business, a big empire. I would say how to build something that's a hundred million dollar empire, but dude, it could even be a billion dollar empire. By the way, we're gonna talk about the three things you should do, and I think we're gonna throw in maybe three things you shouldn't do, okay? So this video is gonna be all value, Okay, you've seen a lot of my podcasts. Some people want to tell their story, how they came up. Dude, these guys are underdogs. They're just like me. I said, man, this video needs to be tactical about how to build big businesses and do big stuff. So if you're ready to grow, get ready. Um, so number one, I want to hand it over. We got the younger brother, right? We got the middle brother, and then we got the older brother, right? Joey, Joey, tell everybody a little bit about what you and your brothers do. Well, Let's start this sucker. Well, what we do is we're car dealers. We started out in the car business. You know, one of the things I like to say about the car business or business in general, what the car business did for, for us is, to me, it took us from nobody to somebody, right? It was a vehicle that we chose. Then we'll talk about a lot about that today. We'll talk about um, scaling everything. You got to choose a vehicle that you're going to use to get to where you want to go. And the car business took us from nobody to somebody. And a lot of people have a hard time saying that, but that's just the way it is. Yeah, right. Mean, let's be yeah. clear. There's those that work in the car business and there's those that own a car dealership. We are okay? owners. Yeah, these guys are owners. They own a business. And it's super important that I clarify that because everybody watching this, the things that they're going to tell you is how to build something big as an entrepreneur for, I'm going to say any business, but if, I, if we're going to talk car business for a minute, I don't think we're going to talk car business a lot. I think we're going to talk business in general, right? Things yeah, to build yeah, anything big. But you guys started in the business before you owned the business, right? And I think yeah. that there's two people that we'll be talking to today. And right now you guys do coaching with business owners. Doesn't matter what industry you're in. The industry is irrelevant. It's the same principles, right? Um, but, but let's talk a bit about that. So what I'd, what, I'd like to, what I'd really like to intro with is a lot of time, I want you to understand the style as we're going into this and the way where I'm, the position that we're coming from. So the approach that I'm going to be given and the, the advice that I'm going to be given is going to be based off of a couple things. One, it's going to be based off of how do you grow and scale a company with the mindset and with the, with the intestinal fortitude to pull forward and actually build something before you decide to start giving up equity or you know get, taking on debt that you really can't afford to pay for. So it may sound like some tough love in there, but what it really is, it's about how do you take just a regular everyday person and or a seasoned entrepreneur that's looking to get a massive lift and how do you do it without giving up, just shortcutting and going right to equity. Because let's face it, at some point in time, there's only two types of entrepreneurs, those that need money and those that are gonna get need money. And what my goal here is, is let's get your stock up before you go do it so you don't have to sell at a discount. So I think, um, you know, we're in the automobile business, we're in the commercial real estate, we do a lot of commercial real estate, we have a lot of related businesses, and I think you were talking about what was, the, we, we started out with the, the segue of. Yeah, like three things, how to grow an empire. Joey, what's a piece of advice? If somebody, if you, if, you, if, if you were going out and let's say your son's like, dad, give me one piece of advice if I'm gonna build this thing. You know, what would you tell him? And I know there's a million things, but drop a heater. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt the podcast. As you're hearing the Batista brothers right now, man, these guys are awesome, dude. These guys are in my brotherhood. They're amazing. They run big businesses. They run together. The fact that they're brothers, I wish that I had two brothers like this. This is crazy. Could you imagine three of me? Guys, their knowledge is insane. Everybody, if they're going to go to the next level, they got to have a mentor and they got to have a coach. If you're wanting to get connected with the Batista brothers, here's all I want you to do. It's very simple. You see the number on the screen. Just shoot them a text message. Ask them any question you need. They got your back for life. They're just like me. Yeah, yeah and I just want to share them with you guys. That's it. So if it's a resource to me, now it's a resource to you. You guys text the number. Let's get back to the video. You know, the first thing I would tell my son is I would say, son, you got to look at what the, the market cap is in that business. How much do the people at the top make? And if they don't make the type of money that you want to make, then that may not be the best business for you. A lot of people are in businesses and they think they're the vehicle that where they get where they want to go and they can't get there because, you know, you can go on an ice cream shop, but, you know, what are you, you going to own 40 of them, 80 of them, right? There are certain businesses that Dude, just... Dude, uh, listen, I, I'm gonna, so I'm going to say something and then I want you guys to be thinking, right? I was on a call with Brad Lee and we do this revolution call every other week, this mentorship. And I want you to hear what he's saying and I want to explain this to you. Um, because I know you understand it, but I just heard Bradley say the same thing. He goes, who wants to be rich on this call? Everybody raise their hand. I want to be rich. I want to be rich. He goes, all right, what do you do? Guy goes, I work for the government. He goes, 
you ain't never going to be rich. No. He goes, well, no, I, I'm going to, he goes, okay, what do you do? He told him and he goes, all right, how much do you make? Guy goes 70,000 a year. You're never going to be rich. He, Dude, I'm not mad. I, listen, I love you. He's like, you're just not going to be rich. What he just said is look at the people at the top. Now, at the top of the government, depends on where you're at in government, but that guy's line of work, he might be able to double his money. He might be able to triple his money. He ain't never gonna be rich. It never. just can't happen. Yeah, never. And we love you, and that's okay, and we love you. Life isn't about being rich, but my point is, is that if you wanted to make that kind of money, where is that cap? That guy's cap, he can't ever be rich. So him raising his hand, he has to get into a different industry if he really wants to be rich. Good point, good, Joey. Good yeah. thing that yeah. guy raised his hand on that call. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, no, no. And he was like, damn, man, I never thought about that. And it's crazy. I want you to think about that right now. Um, all right, let's let you rip for a minute. Tell us one. Give us a heater. Your son, yeah, okay. you're dying. Yeah. You got your son sitting there. He said, one thing, dad. One thing would be, don't take advice from anybody that if they don't have what you want to have, don't take advice from them. Like, mm. what's, what's the most they've ever achieved? What's their highest exit in the business? What's the most amount of money they've ever made in a year? Similar to what he said, if they haven't, if they don't have what you have, you can't take advice from them. Basically, it's, if you don't want to be them, don't don't ask them. No, dude. Yeah, how don't, many? Don't how many take times... advice from anybody that if they don't have what you want to have, or they haven't accomplished something that you want to accomplish. Mm can't listen to yeah it. how many times do you see managers right because uh -huh. they're authority right like I'm your boss right give advice to their co-workers right and so you got to ask yourself do I want to be my manager if you don't want to be your manager don't take the advice so um, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask another question on that how do you find someone I'm just giving an example I'm in a place and I'm like I don't want to really be any of these people right like uh -huh. what's a journey like what's a journey that you go through to find somebody you want to look up to I mean, dude, there's endless amount of resources now, dude. There's social media, there's YouTube, there's TikTok, there's Instagram, right? I think you have to find what's your ultimate end goal. Like, what do you want to do? Like what's maybe your, what niche you're into what's your niche? or what, what niche you want to be in? What's your niche, right? Like, what are you driven by? Are you driven by financial goals? Are you driven by a certain industry? Is there something you want to be? Mm -hmm. Like, I like that. Yeah. Yeah, so it's basically... Dude, there's, like there's no lack of resources, right? It's just a lack of re resourcefulness at this point. Everything's out or there the on the internet. the circle of people you're in, yeah. you're around, what you're, what you're hearing, what you're seeing. Yeah, imagine this. You're wanting to build a great body, right? Yeah. You're in the gym. Do you go ask the guy who's the most ripped, jacked guy in the gym if that's what you want to look like? Or do you want to go ask the guy who's not in great shape? Don't ask the fat guy. <laughs> you don't ask yeah. that guy. That guy hasn't produced the body that you're after. So you have to go find the guy with the body. And so like money or a relationship, if you guys want to build your marriage, you go find someone who's got the best marriage ever. And you just say, hey, man, you know, tell me what you guys are doing. And then all of a sudden you can actually create that same marriage just by finding the blueprint that they ran. And by the way, human beings can all change a lot. You know, 100%. you guys saw me talking to those people downstairs earlier, right? Yeah. In that three hour training. I mean, do listen, like I tried my hardest to convince those people to change. And sometimes it's like, man, I just want to rip their face off. Yeah. Because like you see something in somebody and they just don't see it in themselves, you know, or, or they don't want it. You can't want it more than they do. We're in a world that's just not hungry anymore. Dude, you guys are all really hungry. You guys are all psycho competitors. Yep. You know, when people see that, they're like, woo, relax. You know, I, I remember a long time ago, our country used to appreciate hungry people. It used to appreciate people wanting to build. I mean, imagine, you know, back I mean, in that's the, the, that's the, that's the, America, that's the, the American dream. Yeah, yeah. The land run. Remember the land run back at where they staked their land? You know, like you, well, yeah, the you didn't get a piece of land if you weren't a hustler. Well, the right. reality the reality is is they you know people demonize money, but the reality is is they need to talk about money, right? Mm -hmm. And you get in there, people just demonize it because you know it's a, it's a poverty trait, right? It's like if I go ask you, I say, Andy, how much money did you make last year? What are you going to say? Boom. But I go ask somebody who makes one hundred eighty thousand dollars a year, and it's like, <laughs> you know, like I'm not supposed to talk about it. If you go ask somebody who made twenty million dollars. They tell you I made twenty million. Yeah, right. They, don't care. they tell you yeah. how much they made. It, it just and doesn't they tell even you matter. How they made. And they tell you how they made it. But yeah. if you ask somebody who made one hundred eighty grand, it's, it's just. And that's one of the things I think if you can just start with throwing the conversation out there. But mm -hmm. you know, hold on. Let your brother. Yeah, I go want, ahead. Go I, I ahead. Because no, then we're going to loop. Yeah. We're going to keep looping. Let's we're going to keep looping. I'm ready. I'm ready so, to bring so some fire. You got your son's dying. He says, "Dad, one thing to build our legacy." I would say, you know, look. If you think it takes a long time. It takes a long time. And if you think it doesn't take a long time, it doesn't take a long time mm. to succeed and do what you need to do. How do you speed that time up? 
you speed it up by being like around the right things, people. Like, I mean, the right information, the right people. Coaches, and mentors. Coaches, mentors, and then paying attention to what they say and taking action, right? Pay attention to what the mentor said. Pay attention to what the coach said and take action. And I know from making the mistakes. Do, right? do you think um, the advice, once it's given, a lot of people just are pretty casual about it? I think so. Right, because you got to be, I mean, look, if you want it, if you want it and you want to compress time frame, like you have to attack it like with the pure obsessed psycho mentality. So I had, I've had advice that I've received 15, 20 years ago that just now I can use, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not like I forgot it, but it took me that long to take action on it. I didn't, I forgot about it, remembered it and took action, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not about the information was good or bad. It was just about taking action and being ready for it. You know, you need to be a better student. I need to be a better student. Yeah. So basically stay psycho coachable. Right. Mm -hmm. And then don't be so casual in your action taking. Be ready for change. Yeah. And you have to you have to be super intentional about your cir circle of influence. Right. Dude, that's huge. When, yeah. it, 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 it surprises me all the time. Right. Like being in business. I'm a millionaire. Right. I've been a millionaire for de decades. Right. And I have a whole bunch of people that have come across my path that have my cell phone number, that have an opportunity to have a relationship with me. And they don't value me in the process, right? That's representative of them, not me. Because if they go in and they ask them, hey, open up your phone book, let me see who you have in there. They don't even realize they have millionaires. They're more worried about somebody that they can go play pool with mm -hmm. instead of somebody that they can actually call me and they say, you know what, I got a real estate contract in front of me. Can you change my life and give me advice because I went and got you that cup of coffee that day? They lack fundamental values or respect and they lack consciousness. They're not even present in their own lives because that's one thing that I'm very intentional about. I have a hundred percent, like to his point, a double set of standards I follow. If somebody has a whole bunch of success, I tolerate bullshit from them. I won't tolerate from somebody that don't. Why? Because I understand how the ecosystem works, mm -hmm. right? Back to that, yeah, you, and know, that you know. And listen, uh, by the way, just so everybody knows, uh, he, he's talking about tough love. Tough love. Right? The people that Lots not necessarily. He's the master of tough love, by the way. Yeah. I've given I think I, 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 I think I think this dude, I think this dude invented it. You know what I mean? <laughs> but listen, and, and hey, that's I'm telling I, you, bro. This listen, is, that's why I but, said but, what he, I said. There's but, a lot of love in everything, right? So the thing is, is and I think it's good. I have to do a better job saying the foundation. Assuming all the love is in the in the conversation, let's just get at yeah. it, right? Like let's just go ahead and go at it because yeah. the love's there. And, and I think right? that's what the message is, right? Yeah. Like, like it's already there. Lean into it. Okay. Lean into it. Okay. So like this is it's, important. Collapse the time. To save it. 100%, like he said, right? Find the person, seek them out, write a check, collapse time. Okay, check this out. So number yeah, write one- Write a check for speed, brother. Well, yeah. Well, I, I wanna say this, what did they build and how did they build it? If they can't tell you those two things, I had a marketing guy come in, right? And he was like, he was like, hey man, I'm gonna help you build this thing. And I'm like, okay, cool. Uh, tell me what you built. He's like, well, I mean, I just do marketing, you know, for everybody. I'm like, no, 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 I wanna, I wanna know like someone example. like me, like what did you build for them? Like I didn't know what you built. Yep. Well, listen, I, so I've been studying this for a long time. Okay, I'm doing marketing. What, t what did you build that you can tell me about right now that I can say, oh, you built that? Okay, okay. He couldn't tell me what he built, but he wants, he wants, he wants me to, to spend my money with him. And then if he could tell me what he built, I would say, how did you build it? Like I want to know. Like it's not like you're giving away the secret. I want to know how you built it. And if you can tell me what you built and tell me how you built it, I'm in. And I think we're in an era of a bunch of people just going blah, 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 blah. And they ain't really built nothing. And if they did build it, a lot of times they don't know how they built it. Sure. They got lucky. If you found somebody that got lucky, dude, I mean, because there are people that do get lucky. Yeah. I can't go follow someone who got lucky. If they can't tell me how they built it, we're in trouble. I can't go follow them. Um, I always say this, I'm, I'm a sales boss, you're a sales boss, you're a sales boss, you're a sales boss. What does that mean? We understand the rhythms of sales. We understand the rhythms of a sales floor. If I can't grab a, a closer, right, who can teach another person how to close, he's of no value to me as a leader. Now, could he be a salesperson for me? Sure. Hell yeah. Dude, I've, I've promoted salespeople to be closers and managers and dude, like, they can't teach anyone else to close. What no. they can do, you're on the phone, you can't get that deal, you got someone in the office, they can go in and close it, but they can't tell you how they closed it. Yeah. They just, dude, they're just natural closers. I don't know, I mean, they're just really good. And those people, normally, they don't wanna mm. follow anybody's instructions, they don't follow anybody's guidelines, you gotta let them go. You just gotta let them go. They, they can't. They they can't lead. To you, your point, they can't lead. Yes, but you can't put them in charge no. because if you do, they'll close your deal. 
But whenever I have a whole, when I'm onboarding somebody, I'm like, show them how we do that, how we close these deals. They're like, well, just get them on the phone. I, that's, I need to know, can you teach us what you built? And I think that that's the secret in a mentor is what did you build? You guys have built a big company. Um, how did you build it? You know the blueprint. And if somebody's watching this and you're like, dude, I want to build something kick ass, make sure you guys know the number that you see on the screen. You guys shoot them a text message and be like, dude, I want to know the blueprint. How did you guys build you know it? Hey guys, sorry to interrupt the podcast. As you're hearing the Batista brothers right now, man, these guys are awesome, dude. These guys are in my brotherhood. They're amazing. They run big businesses. They run together. The fact that they're brothers, I wish that I had two brothers like this. This is crazy. Could you imagine three of me? Guys, their knowledge is insane. Everybody, if they're going to go to the next level, they got to have a mentor and they got to have a coach. If you're wanting to get connected with the Batista brothers, here's all I want you to do. It's very simple. You see the number on the screen. Just shoot them a text message. Ask them any question you need. They got your back for life. They're just like okay. me. Yeah, okay. yeah, and I just want to share them with you guys. That's it. So if it's a resource to me, now it's a resource to you. You guys text the number. Let's get back to the video. There's another big thing too that I learned in mentors, right? Is the appetite. You need a mentor that is a lion, Ooh. right? Because I'm going to tell you this. Hey, this because is, they will, this is they like will, they will, entrepreneur will, porn. Listen, they, listen, they will, <laughs> listen, if they don't have it, what will happen is, is if you're a good student, as you should be, if the mentor isn't a lion, eventually you will catch them and they will have you slow down, right? You need a mentor that's such a lion that they're always ahead of you that you just, you're dying just to keep up to stay in the race. Like you're just pushing, pushing to stay in the race because... I have, I've had mentors that were great and they're really good and all that's fine. But what happens is you get close to them, they begin to cascade their lack of desire onto you. Like, yeah. oh, well, you don't need to do that. Like you said, hey, you don't, the, the idea that you don't need to have money is completely delusional, mm -hmm. right? Like, yeah, you we may, have no choices. You have to have money. If, if you're Things broke. are expensive. Like there's, you have no control of your life yeah. without money. But here's, here's one thing is, is we're going around. I want to go in there and talking about scale and in common misconceptions that people have and really give the audience some value, right? 90% of all entrepreneurs, if they're really accountable and they have a conversation with their self, they don't know what's going on in their business. They make a whole lot of assumptions in their business that they assume that everybody's doing their job, okay? Mm -hmm. This is not true. Now, if you're in a really high profit margin, net profit margin business, you can get away with it. But if you want to optimize the business or you want to scale the business, mm -hmm. it's not going to be possible, right? So, you A, have to have an operating system, right? Which is very simple. It sounds very complex, and it is if you don't know how to implement it and work with the people. But in fact, it's very simple, and it's a culture shift. If you have a great culture, you can make that shift. If you have a growth culture, you can make that shift. The other big thing that people struggle with is they want to scale, right? And normally, building a, scaling a business is like a house, right? If you have a weak foundation and you drop something on it, it collapses, right so usually you have a business you've begun to get really profitable you've begun to get really successful and you're like hey i'm ready to grow and then what you find is is you have a business that's twice as much work twice the size and you're making the same money and this is a perpetual cycle that you can get caught that's in. a damn nightmare that's a nightmare but it happens all the time yeah, you can get out of it's that cycle, cycle and fall back cycle. in it i know i see it i did it we did yeah. it yeah. chasing you know a mean? bigger number less profit dude listen i had this guy and he was in our coaching program to start, right? And we scaled him up to make it about a hundred grand a month in coaching, right? Okay. Bless you. And he was making about a hundred grand a month in coaching. Started to be successful. He's doing good. And then he's like, I'm good, dude. Like I'm, I'm good now. And the guy disappears, stops the coaching. You know, it happens all the time. Cause like, I'm like, I got this and disconnects from the coaching company comes back around about six months later. He sold all his time. He has more expenses, salaries, admin, people hired on his company now. That and by the way, he's doubled what he's making. He he, he went from making probably eighty grand a month off from the hundred mm -hmm. to now making two hand uh, two hundred grand a month and paying out about one one sixty. Let me point out a really good thing. I'm so he went one. to making forty, but he, but he went to two hundred. He was making eighty. At a, he gave away everything. He screwed up everything. He sold all his time. You know how I had to get him out of it? He had to stop selling for three months. Stop selling. Oh, they couldn't sell another product to fulfill all the one-on-one -on -one coachings that he had sold to get his numbers up. 
and they he he ruined everything, man. Sometimes it's not what you make. It's oh, what and then, you keep. And then he, dude, he even started buying followers on Instagram and trying to do everything's the shortcut to to get the numbers up. He just became obsessed, and then we had to pull down his whole channel and restart it. Um, anyways, long story short, I'm just telling you like what you just said, like you're building something twice as big and then you look up and you're making the same money and you're doing two times the work, even maybe three times the work, three times the headache, three times the stress, family life is gone. Three times, the, three times would be a good case scenario yes. for, for when that happens. But here's one yes. of the big things to point out, right? So mentors, coaches, whatever the case may be, you know, when I come in and we come and we consult with the Elliot, the Elliot group, right? We don't get the benefits of just Andy Elliott. We get the benefits of everybody underneath this hundred million dollar umbrella, right? Right? Yeah, it's a true. Everybody every single world. person in here yeah. we get the benefit of. See, that's the thing. Even if somebody's going and hiring a coach or a mentor, when you hire a coach or a mentor that has a hundred million dollar company, right? They get to a point you not only get access to them, you get access to their whole entire team and all their resources. That's priceless. You know what I mean? It, it is because yeah. at the end of the day, the strength is sure, like, okay, anybody can be the guru, anybody can be the, the person, but the reality is, is there's somebody always better within the, if, if we're great leaders, which we all are, we've strived to be great leaders, right? It's a priority in our lives. If every single one of us are great leaders, that means we have other great people with us, right? So I think that's the big thing. When, sca when, when scaling, you're going to have to bring in a coach or a mentor. You know, one of the biggest things, and, and I was talking to a couple clients in the last, you know, people I was working with in the last couple weeks, and I would say to somebody, have you had a second set of eyes on your business in the last huge, three years, right? It's huge. Someone yeah. to see something that you don't see. Blind um, spots, there's right? Bu Blind well, there's spots, buckets yeah. of cash. Mm -hmm. right? Massive buckets. They're everywhere. And honestly, dude, I, dude, it's so funny because I always stay, I, I beg my team. I, I beg them. I say, stay out of the tunnel. Stay out of the tunnel, please. Stay out of the tunnel. Stay out of the tunnel because they want to get in that tunnel. Does that make sense? The tunnel is a success trap. You want to get in that tunnel. When you get in that tunnel, you can't see anything. And you stop seeing all the opportunity around you because you're in the tunnel. When you first were in that tunnel and you were coming in, you're like, oh, my God. Yeah, everything. Oh, everywhere. my God. You can see it. Oh, my God. And then you go down and eventually you enter that tunnel. And then all of a sudden you can't see anything anymore. And then people are like, dude, it's right there. It's right there. It's right there. And they can't see it. You got to pull yourself out let me, let me and look see. back but in. But really, someone else has to pull you out. They do. Because our ego kills us. Well, Nobody e wants to say that my business is doing bad. It's ego, and it's also yeah. it's ego, and it's also the fact that you're just emotionally involved, right? Like, we're hanging out. We're cool. Everything's cool. We're yeah. working shoulder to shoulder. We're working. For me, even when running the companies, it may sound... I've... I've... I... Pos I condition myself to be able to be non-emotional about it. When mm -hmm. I look, there's nothing emotional about it. When I look at the numbers, the numbers tell a story. Well, well you know? because you really like your marketing girl, right? Yeah, she's loyal. She yeah, she's been here a long years. time, yeah. right? She's she works extra hours, yeah. Oh she's, she's working all weekend. <laughs> how, how about this? She gets my coffee she's order right. Yeah. She's not doing her job. Right. Oh, no, listen. Well, Bro, it, she's not doing her job. And you're like, that hurts me. I don't like that. I know. We're much further along in the process than that, though. Yeah, but you're like, do you want to grow? But we could save somebody else that time, real easy. No, know? no, but that's what I mean. Is that when you and when how you're many helping another company though, you, you can tell them things that they probably already that know. You that can see it. High, that they you can see it. Like they don't want to mention like you know? that. It's, yeah, it's, it's so easy. And yeah. how many spots are there like that in the business, whether yeah. it's money or loss of money? Listen, well, let me well, tell you. I'm going to tell you exact. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I don't want to well, no, you well, let's talk about like the different facets of like. Where are these buckets of cash normally hide? Well, I'm gonna tell you the easiest way to find one, right? And this is gonna sound so simplistic that people aren't gonna do it. If I come in and I'm like, hey, so tell me what's going on with your sales team. Hey, tell me what's going on with your marketing. I'm gonna to talk to the leader in the company and whatever they are not absolute about, like they might, at least if they don't have, if they don't know what's going on, mm -hmm. then I know if I stick my finger in that cookie jar, it's gonna be sweet. Mm -hmm. Right. Because anywhere it's just going to be right. I've never been wrong. Yeah. I've never been wrong. Not one time. Yeah. Well, I come in, I'll find where that honey in that jar well, is. You sales, know? especially uh, sales industry, um, which is specific, about, which is about every business. Yeah. Which is about every business. Yeah. Dude, sales and service model. They yeah. they don't know their numbers or they know them so much. They've talked themselves out of money. Well, they know the numbers. But let me ask you a question. Are you doing the looking at the numbers based on assumption? Like, are you literally sitting down and communicating those numbers and then you're, you're trusting, but you're verifying? 
yeah. right? And then as you break it down to the ridiculous, which you start realizing, see, here's the, this is the big thing, right? So watch this for a second. This is a really good, and I don't want to go too deep, but let's just say I go look at a number, right? And I start asking whatever the case may be, I go into marketing and I start asking the marketing questions, right? And let's say the marketing team's doing their whole, their job, but all of a sudden the marketing starts calling everybody, checking on all the numbers. What happens? I got seven eyes on my marketing account. And if everything was perfect before, now it's just that much better because they're like, he's looking. Mm -hmm. So the actual art of, and remember as leaders, we're production managers, mm -hmm. right? How do we get more, how do we squeeze that production out of somebody, right? Every damn last little thing of it, right? And you get it by going in and pushing. And the reality is, is most people don't do it. So the question is, is if you hire a coach or a mentor, can the coach or a mentor come in and do that for you in a way that doesn't disrupt your team? And at the same point in time, after them, there's still money left over for you, mm -hmm. right? And if they can achieve that, it would be unwise for someone to not do it. I remember years ago when I was starting out. Now, this is not a practice that I, I do today, but this is 30 years ago, and the world's different today, right? It was the, 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 the normal, the new normal 25 years ago is different than the new normal day. And I remember sitting down talking to my lawyer, and my lawyer said to me, I said, hey, so how do we know what we do with these, these uh, lawsuits when they come in? Or how do we know how to handle these situations where they come in? And his advice to me was... As long as we're running a legal profit, it don't matter. As long as you're bringing in more money than what you're paying me, it's good business, right? And that was the strategy. Now, obviously, we flipped that around today. But if you take that same philosophy, and that would be the challenge for a coach or a mentor. I don't care if you pay somebody a dollar or you pay them $100 million. At the end of the day, when you minus out what you paid them, are you getting more back? And that's one of the things that I think that why business has been such a sport for us and why we've had so much fun is because when we go into the business, whatever we put in it, we get more back, right? So it's, 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 it's been good. So, you know, obviously saying that, I say that to, you know, I want to kind of try to share why we're here talking. I want somebody to have something actionable that they can do. And most people are not going to want to go and have the conversation. Just go look at your, not like most people, if you can go look in the mirror and say, I don't know my numbers. Well, depending on the size of your company, that's how much money's available, right? If you're making a million dollars in net income and you got a million dollars in EBITDA right now and you're not paying attention to the numbers and you go look at it with a couple tweaks, you're at two million in EBITDA. Facts. Boom, right? Yeah. It's a million dollars, mm -hmm. right? Or you can sit back and you can be, like you said, you can be happy with your marketing girl. You can be happy catching flies in your mouth, right? <laughs> and all that, I mean, and all that's fine. I but like you that. are an entrepreneur, right? And an right. entrepreneur today is like a rap mogul. It's like a movie star. The highest, greatest, don't matter what, look at all the movie stars everywhere you go, right? What do they do? They don't want to be respected for their athletics. They don't want to be respected for their ability to, 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 to be on a stage and, and to do a movie. They want to be respected in the highest, the, the greatest battlefield on earth. Which business. Com which comes down right. to your appetite. It comes down to your appetite. They want to be respected in the business. So like, I already got that business. And then they go beyond, right? Then beyond is the big picture, right? But still, either which way. Um, so you want to make sure somebody do, has an you, appetite. How do, how do you fuel your appetite? How do you make yourself hungrier? Like when you think that when you think that there's not more available, just go around more. But do you put your back against the wall more? Like, like, what are some ways that you guys trigger yourself to stay hungry? One of the ways I go ahead and think about the future, future generations. Yeah, I'll like, tell you. Say, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what I have done is I just go to the nicest places on earth. You know, I want to go see where they got fifty, eighty, hundred million dollar houses, and then I want to feel. I want to go in. I want to walk down the street with my wife, and my wife's like, "Oh, that house is so nice." And boom, I want to see the guy pull up in a Bugatti, right? And then, you want, pull say, up in a and then Bugatti. you want to say that's what we're getting. No, well, because it, no, but it's not even that's what we're getting. What it is, is this is what I look for. I want my soul, spirit, and pride to be crushed like a grape, right? <laughs> that's what I want. Because then I want 
beast mode to be activated. Yeah. Right. You gotta, I wanna, you gotta, you gotta find out a way to get a little ticked off. Yeah. Well, and, and that's what I do. It, right or wrong. It is what it is. But, and then the other I thing, love it. then the other thing, the generations other, have changed, right. but it's the, 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 Everybody's the theory, like, the theory still works. Mm -hmm. it, it is. And, 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 and people are always like, it's like, you say, it's the same thing. You always say, Hey man, you know, you're not attractive. If you, if you're fat, sloppy and out of weight, your wife doesn't desire you. Right. Well, you're lying to yourself. If you think, that when somebody pulls up with a Bugatti and your wife looks over there, that it doesn't make excite her a little bit. I know your wife isn't that type of woman, right? But it's the fucking truth. I think she. So likes here's, here's the way to no, answer. I'm not Listen, you. I wasn't saying no, you. I'm saying in general. No, no, no. I know. Here's, I so here's like something that, like huh? you're saying. You're saying how? What, what was your question? How do you say? But, but how, I said, how do you how do you keep your appetite high? Like, like I like what, what you like, said the one time. One of the first times we met you, you said. You're like, dude, just get mad. And you always say it on stage. You're like, just get mad, just get mad, just get mad. Right? Mm -hmm. Like feed that anger. If you're if you can find something that's always just like, man, I hate that. Like, man, that pisses me off. That just that pushes you, in yeah. my opinion. That'll push you like Yeah. I just always, push you, push you, push I you, always, push you. Uh, so funny thing is, is that when I'm shooting my content, uh -huh. right? I have uh -huh. a con I have a con you know, content guy. And um, a lot of times we are the content, we're moving around, we're doing stuff and it's just getting caught and that's the content that's released. But if I was to shoot some direct messages and I'm like, hey man, I wanna, I wanna shoot this message out. I always, or maybe even some teaching YouTube videos. I'll, say, I'll tell my, my uh, video guy, I'm like, hey, I want you to tell me that you've watched some videos before this and that my competitors are doing a better job than me and that they're coming after me and they wanna take me out. There you go. And they're growing faster than me. I need, I need to feel that way because when I'm dropping this shit, like I need to go to another level. Like I need to have that edge. And I think the goal in, in business is, is whoever can keep the edge for the longest, whoever can outlast wins. Now they're strategizing, you know what I'm saying? Like we were all at an event and saw they're talking about out strategizing, outworking. But then he said also outlasting. Yep. Like mm -hmm. I know a lot of people right now that made a lot of money for a couple of years that are ass broke right now. Okay. Yeah, I'm so, a big fan of the Outlaster program. Yeah, you it's know, like till we fan. die. Yeah, big yeah. fan. Yeah, I was asking, I was, you know, I ask people all the time, like, I'm like, do you want to retire? They're always like, yeah, I'm like, I don't want to. I don't want to retire. I want to be able to have choices and do whatever I want. But I can't imagine stop working, you know, my brain quits and then I slow down. Well, I mean, all I'm going to do is give space for disease, dementia, things to come in, like, I can't keep working, man. Well, we live in a society that, that doesn't respect old people today anyways, right? Like as a whole, the collective average does not respect old people, mm -hmm. older people in this country. So to me, the way I look at it is I'm going till I die, right? And when I go in there and I see it, I see people, and, and this is, you know, whatever somebody's belief may be, that's like one of the things when I see Donald Trump, you know what I mean? Or even when I've seen people like late influencers like Grant Cardone, right? They come into the game late and blow up, right? Mm -hmm. They have, I see them and I'm like, you know what? I'm never stopping. Cause actually you get that other win. You get that other win. Yeah. From your maturity, you get more dangerous. You get more dangerous. I was telling, I was telling, uh, I was telling Joey that like, you know, me and you are the same age. Hmm. Our bodies, when we're older to me, develop more muscle composition than body composition, more muscle than when you're younger. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt the podcast. As you're hearing the Batista brothers right now, man, these guys are awesome, dude. These guys are in my brotherhood. They're amazing. They run big businesses. They run together. The fact that they're brothers, I wish that I had two brothers like this. This is crazy. Could you imagine three of me? Guys, their knowledge is insane. Everybody, if they're going to go to the next level, they got to have a mentor and they got to have a coach. If you're wanting to get connected with the Batista brothers, here's all I want you to do. It's very simple. You see the number on the screen. Just shoot them a text message. Ask them any question you need. They got your back for life. They're just like okay. me. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. And I just want to share them with you guys. That's it. So if it's a resource to me, now it's a resource to you. You guys, text the number. Let's get back to the video. I agree, dude. It's I, just, know, I noticed that. Yeah, yeah. yeah cold like, old man. I noticed strength. that. It's crazy, <laughs> I dude. Noticed it. Dude, we're getting this, 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 this. I mean, and this, this is this is really good. But I mean, they got you know the other the other thing, you know, is for me the big thing is is. I say the story like this. One guy says, I can't do it because of his family. And another guy says, I can do it because of his family. I think one of the greatest things that we have is obviously with brothers, we're very fortunate to have achieved that, right? That's a very unique dynamic, right? I've seen how close you guys are. And they got, and, 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 Thank you. and, I, and I think it's, it's good. It's rare. And I, it is very rare. And I think it's also Super good. Rare. Like one of the things that we're lucky enough, like kind of how you have a, you know, a brotherhood and you bring people in, 
the people that are attracted to us a lot of times they come to us because even if they don't have that they want that yeah. right so for me or they respect it they respect it and yeah. or yeah and i think for me my biggest driver in life is i want my family to be proud of me i don't want them to be i don't want them to come here and be like andy elliott i want them to be proud of me mm -hmm. right yeah. so i want to as much as we respect you and everything you know what i'm saying like i want to be i want them to respect you but i no, want you guys them are building your legacy but i want them but yeah. i want them is you know i want to be you know proud of the family name proud to be able to go in there and do it i want them to be able to have that yeah. and you know, and, and, and the thing is, is when you go in there and you look at it, like I've, coaching people and develop people, I realized something in life when I was coaching people, right? As you look back to the capacity that someone is willing to go to, and unless they've had a great mentor, they've been around somebody really great. Mm -hmm. What's the highest, greatest thing you've ever achieved? What's the highest, greatest thing your father's ever achieved? What's the highest, greatest thing your grandfather's ever achieved? What's your highest, that's why you say bloodline breaker. Mm -hmm. The reality is, is most people they don't realize, but they got, you know, failed, flawed ideology they can never get out from underneath, ever, right? But boom, if they can. So for me, it's like, I wanna make sure that I'm driving and pulling that forward. I want. I don't care about, I look at it like this, when I was younger, so I was a millionaire and went broke when, you know, it, it was a millionaire and went broke, right? And did it again. Multi. Multi-millionaire and did it again, right? In real estate and in an automotive. I went broke and I did it again, right? And what I learned along the way was I was a poor person. To, what, this is the biggest thing I learned. It's like, are you, are you a poor person that makes a lot of money? Or are you wealthy, right? There's a difference. I was a poor person that made a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And this is a poor person that makes a lot of money trait. I wanna give my kids a lot of money. No, I don't wanna give my kids or my family nothing. I don't wanna give them nothing. I wanna make them, app. now if I have a child or somebody in the family may not be up to snuff, we wanna care for them, I wanna provide for them, and no, my money's not going anywhere else, my money's going all of it to my family 100%, right? But the, the, the point that I'm trying to make is, is that if they don't know, if they're not the being, right? If they don't see me being the example, and I was talking to somebody the other day, and, and, and this is kind of the, my closing statement, is for me, I want to be able to be the example for them, right? Mm -hmm. That no matter what, and I can teach them how to, the, the art of achievement and fulfillment, how do you say it? Yeah, the art of achievement, art of fulfillment. The art of yeah. achievement and fulfillment, but to have the right mindset, right? Mm -hmm. Because if the mindset's flawed, they'll never get there. And I'm kind of going around, but the thing is, give them money, tell them you're gonna give your kids money, your family money, that's a poor, that's a poor person's mentality. A yeah. wealthy mentality, a wealthy mentality is you have to teach them the language of money, the art of money. You have to teach them, and, and that's really what it is. That's Gen the, generational habits. Generational habits, and that's yeah. the big. That's the big thing. Yeah, that's not, the driver. Gen not generational yeah. wealth. Generational habits. Generational habits. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And and so so guys, so super important. Number one, you guys have all met the Batista brothers. Okay, they're with me all the time. Um, I want to introduce them to you guys. Okay, if you follow me. You'll learn over time, every resource that I have, I try to introduce if they're great people to the world. That way you guys, you know, you're on a journey, right? He's talking about real estate, right? Like, you know, I don't really, you know, Jackie does some real estate, but I don't get into real estate. These guys kill it in real estate, okay? You wanna smash that, that sector, you reach out to them. Business, I love talking business. You got three brothers here that have built a freaking massive empire and they wanna share what they know. They want to share their knowledge, priceless. If you want to build something big, like this is your opportunity. So if you want yeah. to connect with them, yeah, if you want to connect with them, you don't get one, you get three, okay? Make sure you shoot them a text, okay? You introduce yourself, let them know who you are, you see the number on the screen, and then they'll reach out to you. Yeah, we'd love to help, we'd love to help, man. That's really what it is. This is a, Can't this is a passion project as much as, you know, there's always a financial piece to it but it's definitely you know that's what we want to do we want to give back we want we to want to make people. badasses we want to make yeah. badasses. i mean dude it's cool to be a badass but you know what's even cooler to make a whole bunch more badasses yeah. and that's why and that's why we're sharing a lot of information with you today i'm positive 100 percent positive that most of you watching this are going to watch this at least two or three times you're going to grab a, a pen piece of paper you're going to take as many notes as you can and you're going to see that man like there's so much opportunity so this is it guys okay if you want to change your life you guys can reach out to the Batista brothers. All you do is shoot them a text. They'll reach out to you in the next 24 hours. 
Whatever you need, they'll help you with it. Um, super important. Love you guys. We're going to be together Bobby, for a long thank time. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much. You know, I don't know what your hole is, okay? I don't know what you want to build, but I know this. If you surround yourself with the right people, I know that you can help fill that hole. I know you can build whatever you want. You just need a brotherhood and a team to do it, okay? So love you guys. We'll see you in the next video. Make sure you text them if you want to connect with them. They'll help you guys. Have a blessed day. Let's go. Hey guys, looks like you made it to the end of the video. You're the true point zero 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 one percenters. Look, I know one percenters, they can make it halfway through the video, but making it all the way through, you guys are the best. Now, here's what I'd like to do. Number one, I wanna get closer to you. The fact that you made it all the way through the video, you're like, man, dude, I wanna roll with this guy. Okay, so I need to connect with you. Down below, there's a description box on this YouTube video. There's a link, it says coach with me one-on-one, -on -one, okay? If you'll go and you'll enter your information, I'll reach out to you in the next 24 hours. You can tell me what you need help with, what your goals are, and we will crush it together. I would love to help you guys go to the next level in life. You can tell I'm changing my life really fast, and I know that you guys want the same thing. I'd love to go with you on that journey. So right now, if you'd like to partner with me, team with me, if you want me to help coach you and push you, everybody needs a coach, a higher level of accountability to go to the next level. Go to the description box below, click on the link, fill out your information, I'll talk to you in the next 24 hours. Let's kill it.